All right, so where do we start our World War II uh, history? And, you know, the causes in this map, of course, is going to be a very important map I'm going to use in several of my first few lectures here on World War II because it's going to show, you know, exactly how Germany got bigger and stronger and how the war eventually explodes in 1939. Uh, and there are events that, you know, led up to the war that were way before 1939. And so I want to start by talking about some things that, for those of you in my class, I covered in previous lectures. So I'm going to go through it fairly briefly uh, because these are topics I've already covered in, in earlier lectures um, and, and just kind of get a sense of what we're talking about here. And again, I'm going to come back to this map a little bit later, but obviously you see Germany. Um, and then I'll explain all these other territories and colors as we go through some of the other causes is moving forward. So there are some things that have been going on for a while. So let's start with a few kind of backdrop things that you should be aware of. So World War I, right? You know, obviously this is something that's been historically studied a lot. You know, some people say what's more important, World War I or World War II? And a lot of people say, well, World War I because, you know, World War II doesn't happen without World War I. And there's a very strong element of truth to that, right? World War One, you know, set up this this you know horrific war that took place that I cover the trench warfare, if you remember, and how how horrible those trenches were, and how so much of that generation that went through World War One, you know, the the wounds were still so raw, the emotional wounds of World War One were still so raw that when people like Hitler and Mussolini were coming into power and then took over power. Many people in Europe, and we're going to do a whole set of lecture on this, just didn't want to deal with it, with Hitler. And so this is going to be a very important topic we'll get to uh, in the next video, something called appeasement. Uh, but I think World War I played a big role in that. The other issue that has come up very often is not just World War I itself and making people so, you know, hesitant to confront, you know, confront people like Hitler but how the war ended. And this is a very interesting idea, the Treaty of Versailles. And again, I covered this in my previous lecture a bit more, but the Treaty of Versailles is of course the treaty that ended the war. And I wanna read something to you from 1923. Keep in mind, World War II starts 1939. So this is a speech from the treaty about the Treaty of Versailles. So listen to this, it just says, with this armistice begins the humiliation of Germany. As so long as this treaty stands, there can be no resurrection of the German people. No social reform of any kind is possible. The treaty was made in order to bring 20 million Germans to their death and ruin the German nation. Now, who said that in 1923? Well, that was actually Hitler, as you can see here. And so this is Hitler before he was ever a ruler. Uh, this is Hitler very, you know, shortly after the war, 1923, his speech. But what you see in the Treaty of Versailles, and this is kind of a bit of the historical controversy of this document, is people say, well, the Treaty of Versailles was too harsh, and that's why it caused World War II. And as I explained in one of my previous lectures, there's a bit of debate on that. Was it because it was too harsh? Was it really completely unfair? And I give kind of some different perspectives on that. But is without a doubt is Hitler's ability to use the Treaty of Versailles to get the German people upset to get the German people, you know, angry about what was going on. Um, and so that's definitely something that was a factor in the war. Um, and, and so that's something that just, I think is really important that, that he was able to constantly, and was the treaty literally meant to bring 20 million Germans to their death? No, uh, but this is how a lot of the German people are gonna feel. And Hitler was gonna be able to use that in order to, to rally a lot of people to him later on. The rise of Hitler and the rise of Mussolini into power, obviously, again, these are things I cover in my previous lectures. You know, I talk about totalitarianism and their rise to power. And with that, the restoration of German power, I think that's going to be key as well. It wasn't just that, you know, Germany is going to, to have a new ruler, you know, Hitler is going to restore German military, German uh, strength, and that is going to play a big role. Remember with World War I, you know, I talked about how a strong Germany in the central part of Europe helped to bring about a war. Well, a strong Germany in the central part of Europe is going to be a big factor as to why World War II begins. So those are just some brief things we've covered in previous lectures, but I really think even with all this, with World War I, with the Treaty of Versailles, with the rise of Hitler, with the rise of Mussolini, one of the core reasons why World War II happened was a policy, a policy that, you know, is going to, to be historically seen as, as a major factor, which is this idea of appeasement. 
So what is appeasement? How did appeasement lead to World War II? That's what I want to cover in our very next lecture here, right? So I'm going to kind of spend a little bit longer on the next one on appeasement. Make sure you're going to be very familiar with that. All right. Hope all that's clear. Thank you.